are global data centers built for a secure, sustainable, and digital world. They make the invisible visible and anything possible. And that's the great thing. Together, we do great things. Chennai, known as the gateway to South India, is one of the major IT and data center hubs in the country. The Adani Group now plans to build world-class data center infrastructure in the city of Chennai. The Adani Chennai One Data Center is the biggest hyperscale data center in Chennai with a 32 megawatt IT load. It is strategically located in Sipcot IT Park with direct connectivity to the National Highway and other major IT hubs in Chennai. The data center is being built to meet global standards with seven layers of security, best-in-class power usage effectiveness, redundant fiber connectivity and green energy. The Adani Chennai One shall be equipped to provide one-stop solution for all telecom and IT infrastructure needs of hyperscale customers, including low-latency network connectivity, high-performance computing and other value-added services. Through this data center, the Adani Group aspires to contribute to the local economy while continuing a work towards nation building at large and being steadfast on our philosophy of growth with goodness. Founded in Germany over 100 years ago by Anton Piller. The company has a long history in the manufacturing of exceptionally high quality electrical machines and power quality equipment. Today, as part of the multidisciplined global British engineering group Langley Holdings PLC, Pillar is a world leader and innovator in a number of power protection technologies, specializing in UPS systems for mission critical applications and frequency converters for aircraft ground power, amongst other uses. Pillar UPS systems are found in applications where continuous high quality power is paramount, such as computer data centers, financial institutions, broadcasting, telecommunication networks, airports, healthcare facilities, and continuous process production sites. Nothing protects quite like Pillar. It's amazing what humans have accomplished. Cars that think. Machines that learn. Healthcare that predicts. The progress of tomorrow has yet to be imagined, but it will rely on data. It will rely on Vertiv. Vertiv ensures data gets where it needs to be uninterrupted. Critical power is always running. Servers perform at optimal temperatures. Infrastructures grow safely and responsibly. Applications run without glitches. And life leaps forward again. Getting there takes vision and agility. Our leading experts think beyond infrastructure, 
connecting the dots to create integrated, intelligent ecosystems, to create a future that takes innovation to the next level. And when business needs shift, we work closely with our customers every step of the way. Together, we ensure they are ready before they ever need to be. Vertiv provides continuity in our digital world, so we remain unbound, liberated, free to create the next big thing. Vertiv, architects of continuity. Welcome, Mr. Bridge. Good, good afternoon. Good morning, sir. How are you? Thank you, sir. This is Himanshu Prajapati from CII GBC. Yeah. Good evening, Mr. Deepak. Nice to meet you. Yeah, good evening, good evening, Himanshu. Hope my audio is clear. Yes, sir, it is. So we'll be starting the session in another uh, two minutes. Sir. The earlier session is uh, getting over in just two minutes. Yeah, I was there listening. Hello, Deepak. Hello, uh, Bridge. Uh, both of you, good evening. Yeah, good evening, Mr. Uh, Rathod. Good evening, Bridge. Nice to meet you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bridge. You operate from India, Bridge, or some other country? How's it? Uh, I'm in China now. Okay. So, sir, your office is open or still working from home or how is it? Okay. Your, your audio is not very clear. Okay. So can you hear me now? Yeah, slightly better. Okay, let me... Is it clear? Mm, yeah, now, now, now it's better. Okay, okay. Good, good. They're all, we are already live now. Thank you, Mr. Suresh, Mr. Deepak Thakur, and Mr. Bridge. This is very, very exclusive session on hyperscale data center that we would like to have with a strong input of sustainability. So I hope already you have seen the title of this presentation, this session, scale sustainability and scalability in hyperscale data center. I don't know whether you have attended all the sessions or not, but hyper scale is talking many many times all throughout three days in the past and we had a lot many discussions today in the in some of the sessions previous about hyperscale data center how it is going to make the future of india with regard to digital, digital india also 
So we are really uh, honored to have all of you here, and uh, our special thanks goes to Mr. Suresh Kantolas for continuous support to Data Center Summit. Last year you had participated, you had presented, and this uh, this time I have seen your slide personally. It's a great presentation to introduce the sustainability in hyperscale data centers. Similarly, we have Mr. Deepak Thakur continuously, constantly providing support to IGBC Data Center Summit. Sir, it's a real pleasure for us to have you, to have support from Delta Power. It, it is not possible without your support to run this, this kind of like large size programs. So first of all, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Suresh uh, Rathod. Suresh Rathod is President Sales Co-location Business as Control S. He has more than 25 years of rich experience in enterprise sales, pre-sales, customer operations, several responsibilities he has, and he has some leading multiple cross-functional teams, and he is extremely doing well because we have seen a lot many things from Mr. Rathod. He has been instrumental in forging very large and strategic deals with Indian and multinational customers for controllers. So in a way, he delights, he delights all the customers with regard to data center services. With a bachelor degree in engineering from Mumbai University, an MBA from Symbiosis Pune, Suresh has worked at and contributed immensely to the growth of the organization. So over to you, Mr. Suresh. We are really very happy to have you for this particular presentation, having more and more discussion about sustainability in hyperscale data center. So over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Shivraj, uh, uh, for uh, introducing me. And uh, good evening, uh, all the uh, audience. I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring some uh, uh, very important aspect of uh, hyperscale data center, some of these aspects you may already know, uh, you may get refreshed. Some of them could be a newer one for you. Uh, before I do that, I would like to introduce, I have joined Control S in 2011, spent close to 10 years, more than 10 years when I joined Control S data center, Indian data center market itself was a tiny market. When we launched our first facility in Mumbai, which is 5,000 racks, uh, it was like, uh, competition came and said, oh, why, you, you know, when all of us are building 500, 600 racks facility, why are you building a 5,000 rack capacity? Now, obviously, we had no answer uh, and uh, we just laughed at it. Okay, fine. Uh, we did uh, have our share of struggle for initial two, three years, but uh, uh, later on, obviously, the business picked up. And now, I think most of uh, the player in this business wants to build only and only hyperscale data center. Gone are the days when people would have built 500 racks, etc. Now, nobody wants to build below 50 megawatt. Now, that's the scale. And that's the scale has come because the country has that kind of a potential. If I want to give you a perspective, US alone has a 2 billion square feet of data center. And in India, cumulatively across all the service provider, we have just reached 80 million square feet. Now that's, uh, you know, seven to 8 million square feet. Now that, that's, that's the gap. And we are the third largest cell phone uh, user in the, in the world. Now the second largest data proliferation is highest in the country. Data usage, 15 GB per user is the highest. Now all those things is obviously driving enormous growth in data center industry. But at the same time, we have to be very, very responsible because we are going to consume a huge amount of natural resources how responsible we could be and i'm going to uh, and my entire presentation today is uh, about uh, how we have to be more and more responsible company uh, just give me a moment uh, Yeah, so uh, what are the strategic intervention control is, has done in the past and what we are going to do in the future is, is what I'm going to talk about uh, in today's session. Now, any data center and more so in hyperscale or a large data center, these are the six key criteria, six are the, these are the three, six key important decisions which every player will have to take. How much energy are you going to consume? How much of it 
are you going to source from a renewable sources and in india within every state has a different regulation so you have to obviously read the local regulation what is allowed what is not allowed what is the carbon footprint are you going to be net carbon neutral or if not net carbon neutral what is the percentage uh, of carbon neutrality you can contribute to the entire environment how do you are going to do a waste management not only your own assets but also assets of uh, your customers you know because uh, it assets will get obsolete in uh, five to six years time uh, and uh, in in some cases it may be three to four years time uh, water is scarce in many part of the country many cities especially where the high plus hyperscaler data center are getting built and how environmental friendly your design would be i think these are the six key criteria around which i'm going to talk about today now, some of the facts i would like to bring that energy consumption of data center is going to become very 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 huge you know uh, in 2030 we expect that at least 10 percent of the world's electricity will be consumed by data center alone uh, some of the countries where data proliferation data center proliferation is much much higher like singapore or ireland it could reach beyond 15 to 30 percent and that's that's really very very large and that's the lot of responsibility comes on our shoulder the world bank data sent uh, data you know analysis what they've done from 2015 to 2018 the entire data consumption grew by 800% but the silver lining in this entire thing is that power consumption just grew by 16% now that's the uh, huge uh, silver lining about how the server technologies, storage technologies, the data power consumption, et cetera, has been evolved over years. Now, renewable energy today, is, it's bad, you know, it's just 20% contributes to renewable energy. All other 80% are coming from the other fossil fuels, et cetera. Now, these are some of the data points I'm putting in front of you, but the most important silver lining, and obviously this uh, pandemic has accelerated that, that ICT, usage of ICT has increased to the extent where uh, I've been not able, I have not uh, took an aircraft for now, uh, this is my 17th month. Uh, March uh, 16, 2020 was my last aircraft. After that, I have not taken a yet uh, uh, aircraft. So obviously the travel has reduced, business has not stopped. All meetings are happening online today. Otherwise we would have if, if not for pandemic, we would have assembled in a sun conference room in some some uh, some good hotel in a city. Now we are all doing it virtually, sitting in the comfort of our own homes. So we are this entire journey of uh, the amount of data gets utilized more and more in data center. Uh, entire consumption of electricity and power globally will reduce, uh, be it travel, be it any other means. So. Uh, testimonials for control and strategic intervention for sustainable data centers. If you see, we are winner of Golden Peacock Innovation Award last year. TUV has certified us as a true waste certification. Winner of energy efficiency by CII for last 10 years and zero downtime. Now, zero downtime, how it is contributing is also very important. Hundreds of data centers which were earlier working in their those small tiny data center or a server rooms in their or organizations uh, machine room or a server room they all now congregated because they have the confidence that okay fine data center provider will give us a zero uptime uh, zero downtime it will be hundred percent uptime their PUEs will be low their energy consumption will be low it is better to move uh, our data to these data centers rather than managing on own so that's that's how the zero downtime also is helping industry industries to consolidate their small small server room to a large hyperscale data center control is uh, by enterprise it world we have regarded as the best hyperscale data center award we got most sustainable data center award and uh, obviously large enterprises in india uh, more particularly the bfsi recognizes us as as one of the dominant player and uh, and uh, and obviously, uh, if you read both these certificates from an uh, enterprise IT world, they're all certified certifying us from a green perspective also. And why they are doing it, I'm, I'm I'm going to elaborate more on it. These are some of the other uh, certification which brings a lot of confidence in our clients. We are rated for certified completely dual redundant uh, uh, system and subsystem. 
ISO 20001, ISO 27001, ISO 22301, SOC 1, SOC 2, PSI, DSS, TUV, etc. etc. You know, these uh, certification talks more about the way we operate the data center and the confidence uh, it brings to our customers. Now, I'm going to talk more about Golden Peacock. Now, Golden Peacock is an award first time got by any data center come operator in this country. Now, why it is important? Because it is not only energy management or efficiency in energy or a better PUE or the way you run the data center. This talks about three important things. Energy reduction and efficiency is one. Toxicity reduction and sustainability. All three together, they are evaluating. Most of the time, before uh, last year, the participants in these kind of awards were either large automobile companies or manufacturing companies or the companies who are generating more and more uh, you know uh, uh, waste etc now that's the first time the data center company uh, they evaluated and they found that yes that that industry is also one of the potent where a lot of uh, improvements in everything can be achieved i'm i'm going to put uh, some of the large hyperscaler data centers for your uh, reference on the screen uh, the extreme right, left one, we have a Mumbai data center. It's a data center one, 3,500 racks already filled in. Mumbai data center two, 2,000 racks, 24 megawatt. Now, if you see 3,500 racks earlier and then 20, 20 megawatt, but let the newer one got built with a much lesser rack capacity, power density is increasing, uh, 24 megawatt, hardly any, hardly small amount of power uh, is left. Hyderabad DC1, DC2, Noida DC1, uh, Bangalore 12 megawatt kind of a facility. And here is real, real hyperscale. I'm, I'm pleased to present to you that in Mumbai, we have already launched a phase one of our large hyperscale campus of 300 megawatts. Now, this is not data center, these are data center parks with eight to nine data center planned. Uh, in, in a city of Mumbai. First phase of it is already launched on 30th of June, which we call it as a DC3. Another phase, which is DC4, is going to get launched in October this year. We are not stopping here. Uh, Hyderabad, uh, 200 megawatt, uh, 15,000 15, racks capacity, a very large land footprint of more than 20 acres has already been purchased. And we are going to announce the launch of those data centers also very soon. Now, these are part, the inventory are part. What are the various green initiatives we are taking, which, uh, which benefits not only our customers, uh, controllers, but also uh, the, the, the environment. And uh, it helps our competition also to benchmark. Now, if you see the first data center in 2008, the design PUE, PUE is 1.8. And the last one, which we designed in 2019, is 1.32. Now, these are all designed PUEs. Obviously, the operation, uh, uh, the data centers are getting operated at slightly higher PUEs than the design one because you don't get ideal uh, IT load all the time. You know, you have to work with a disparate IT load from all the customers. Some will be from 4 megawatts to 30, from 4 kilowatt to 30 kilowatt. Another great initiative by Control S. Now, if you see the building two, a taller building in on the screen, which is called DC2. Now, DC2 is wrapped with a solar panel all around. Now, this brings a small of amount of energy gets generated within the data center itself. I know in India, in a larger city like Mumbai, putting up a solar plant in the data center campus itself is almost impossible because of the very, very high land prices. But we attempted to create some energy and uh, this brings uh, it also it is it is almost 1.3 megawatt install capacity for like 20,000 of units of power generated per year is, is the capacity uh, obviously there are a lot of advantages but uh, it, it is it, it it brings the concept that you know you could you could do it in a limited manner uh, in a bigger city in metro cities as well some of the other green initiative is choosing each and every equipment in the data center so that it lowers the energy consumption, improves our PUE, and obviously contribute uh, to betterment of this world. 
uh, we have chiller plant manager for and all chillers are managed with the chiller plant manager it could be run separately as well but controllers has had taken a conscious decision right from the day one that each and every chiller in the data center will be run with the chiller plant manager that brings more efficiency a virtual frequency drive for all the hvac equipment variable cooling system all the cooling towers are interfaced with the cti online monitoring and chemical dosing of every chiller now that that uh, uh, that 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 avoids a lot of filtration itself all ups systems for mechanical load are on eco mode every power machines is hd dual course automation 100% lighting is on led uh, usage of motion sensors so that the led light consumption is also on the lowest side and bms monitors the pue in fact we have data center display in all our data center which it is uh, displaying the pue live earlier i remember in you know my earlier organizations uh, calculating the pue itself was a task and calculating a pue was like a two week uh, two week process here live it is displaying in all the data center visitors uh, whoever are visiting can have a look at it live themselves reduce water consumption in indian cities especially cities like mumbai or bangalore or chennai is 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 a major task so we are doing what storm water harvesting recycling of water at bangalore setting up a stp mtp recycling plant in bangalore collaboration with local communities in mumbai uh, with local municipal corporation in navi mumbai adoption of water consumption reduction technology now this is obviously a low flow plumbing fixtures usage of dual flush uh, wc's and waterless uh, urinals entire site needs to be managed in such a way that uh, you know your site doesn't get heated up how can you protect from external heat coming into the data center whether it from a sunlight or anything so we we, we do a high sri roof and non roof all adapt, adaptation of greenery now if you see picture of all our data center every data center consisting of a a huge green belt within within the limited space whatever we could have waste performance is one of the important criteria we have now some of the some of these are some of the small steps uh, uh, our larger footprint is can we remove a complete dg set from the data center and, and run only the gas turbines uh, now these are the long term plans and we'll see how these technologies also evolve and we are able to adopt it see data center major challenge is we just we can't do a experiment of a newer technology within the data center uh, because data centers are very very critical mission critical 100% uptime needs to be achieved so once the technology stabilizes obviously we will we will utilize them to reduce uh, but however replacement of dg loop oil uh, instead of a time bound replacement earlier like 3 months 6 months you replace it now here we do actual parameter testing online and uh, are able to uh, uh, do some checking as to whether they are really up for change or it can sustain for more and which has led to a 50% reduction 100% recycling of hazardous waste through authorized recycler 100% recycling of all the batteries deployment of organic waste converters composter to uh, recycle solid waste nutshell ctrls is building a robust resilient Uh, sustainable and smart data centers in india which are zero human intervention data center now zero human data center philosophy which control has adopted in 2016 17 has helped us immensely in the pandemic pandemic situation where we were we had we had lot of issues sending people to data centers people who were operating in data center they had to stay back into data centers now all these uh, uh, issues to some extent were avoided with zero intervention uh, human intervention data center we are using ai driven variable cooling plant rpa robotic process automation drives uh, operational efficiencies iot sensors machine learning other technologies which are used heavily in all our data centers which enable our data center from a hyper scale to also smart data center now all these endeavors has led to a good results and obviously what matters is the outcome the results uh, what you achieve 11000 tons of carbon dioxide co2 reduced emission in last year 2021 more than 
thousand kgs of battery waste and 2.35 tons of e-waste disposed in an environmental friendly manner in last three years. More than 21,000, more than 21,000 hours of employee training towards sustainability. And that, that's more important. All your employees needs to be sensitive towards uh, each and every parameter of what they're working on. ISO 27001, 100% supplier have to comply to this board, anybody who wishes to supply to control S. Now, control S uh, building these 300 megawatt data center in Mumbai and a 200 megawatt data center in Hyderabad. We are also uh, announcing our Chennai data center launch very soon. All will be sustainable, will stand for long term. Our rated four helps us to build a data center which sustain for a much, much longer period than those traditional data center, which has a life of not more than 20 years. Now that's all I have uh, on this session today. Uh, happy to uh, remain present for any question answers from any of the audience. Shivraj, if you have any of this session, happy to answer. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Suresh. It was fantastic presentation, and we would like to understand more about what is called Control Z. <laughs> see, Control S, Control Z means zero. We know, see, as, uh, if you see our name, Control S, uh, many times we were asked a question: Why name Control S? Now, Control S means Control S. In our earlier days, we used to put Control and S to save the data. So control S mission is to save the data of this knowledge economy. Now that's that's control S name. Now control Z, it means we want to use zero, uh, we want to use 100% renewable energy. We want to use zero uh, normal energy from any sources. We want to do a zero waste like this, you know, the concept what we are trying to develop. Right, right. And what is your thought process on having the reduction in water using a local municipal for persons west water actually igbc recently developed one framework called net zero water framework and there we have given ample focus on that how a municipal corporation can can uh, can have some agreement with some of the uh, bigger consumers to treat the water and use this water for their facilities so as a control as we we have a target of uh, net zero neutrality by 2030 now our uh, Technical and operational teams are evaluating all the technologies whichever are available and trying to adopt which works best uh, in a given framework. So we are open. Uh, I'm, I'm sure in case you have developed anything, we will be happy to look at it and uh, try to implement it as well. Yeah, so definitely we'll connect uh, offline uh, next week and we'll explore how we can uh, put this, this kind of framework in your data centers. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So thank you very much for showcasing all the brilliant ideas about hyperscale and sustainability in data centers. I think you, you have created path for many data centers to put a dynamic facade. We have seen some of your data centers where, we, where uh, you have installed IB uh, PVs, like integrated building photovoltaic system uh, that generates a lot of energy. Uh, it is not implemented in any other data center in the country. So great for uh, this kind of uh, uh, new learning for the industry. And thank you very much for your continuous support to Data Center Summit and IGBC. Thank you. Thank you, Shivraj. And uh, uh, namaste to all the audience, whoever are watching. Thank you so much. All right. So friends, now uh, we would like to invite Mr. Deepak Singh Thakur. Deepak Singh Thakur is business management strategist, leading the profitable growth of the communication and information solutions business unit for UPS, Delta, data center solutions, critical cooling, and APFC solutions business in India and SAR countries. He is a solution sales strategist with over 21 uh, years of rich experience in customer engagement for their critical physical infrastructure design and build. He has a, he has a patience for new business development, having new product and solution, having some uh, strategic sales and uh, solutions for the uh, dedicated customers, global account management and data center solutions. He has a strong drive to create new solutions that deliver business value, customer success by, inno by innovative professional services and integrated technology modules to address customer needs. I think it is always important to have best to the best technology available for the data center, whether it is a conventional data center or hyper scale, unless we have the manufacturers suppliers to meet their demand, it, there would be no wonders in having these, these kind of data centers. 
So uh, with this, uh, it is our real pleasure to invite Mr. Deepak uh, Singh Thakur to make the presentation. Over to you, Mr. Deepak. Thank you, Shivaraj. And a very good session to you to me. Thanks, uh, Suresh Ratoji, for explaining the and setting the tone for hyperscales. I think uh, he clearly set the tone from whatever 10 megawatts to going ahead 300 megawatts and plus he's on himself talking about 500 megawatts on from controllers only. So that's a very, very good news. Uh, my presentation, can I share my presentation? Can you? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah. So are you able to see my screen? Mm, not now. Just a second. Yeah. Can you see the screen now? Or? Yes, we are able to see the screen. Please put this on full board, full yeah. presentation board. Yes, please. Yeah, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Shivraj. Uh, once again, uh, my topic today is going to be in terms of uh, technology advancements in critical backup power solutions for data centers particularly for our uh, hyperscale uh, in data centers. So without wasting time, let me go to straight to the topic. Uh, we know that India's digital economy is going to be potentially reaching around the uh, USD 1 trillion by 2025. And uh, there is no uh, uh, doubt about it because of the, it is driven by increased qualifications of smartphones, internet penetrations, the growth of mobile broadband, and also a lot of technology adoption, which is uh, coming up uh, for uh, social media adoption. Now, what is also uh, on the other side is the new technologies, which are uh, going to drive the, uh, the way the businesses are run. Uh, for example, we have internet of things, we have smartphones, uh, we are talking about uh, smart factory industry 4.0, uh, VR, AR, gaming, a lot of uh, in uh, during this pandemic, uh, this uh, market has grown. Then uh, autonomous things like car and self-driving is, is a remote thing in India, but then definitely uh, that's a technology which is going to come. AI and machine learning already in my previous uh, presentation by controllers, they explained how this had held them. And this is the way forward. And also drone technologies in uh, most of the uh, retail and uh, logistics uh, you will find. And uh, all this is what is bringing is a uh, huge data exploration so what is happening is you are generating a lot of data and those data are need to be certain place analyzed, certain place stored or computing and uh, making business decisions and also certain data which are required um, uh, at the edge portion. So what is happening is now if you see uh, with 5G connections likely to be 88 million uh, in India projected by 2025, uh, you can see the amount of data which is going to be generated in the coming years. We are not yet reached the peak. Uh, One billion of internet users will also be there by 2025, uh, which is projected. And then also 25 GB per month per user uh, by 2025 will be the usage. And this is what we are talking currently is a projection where we do not have the 5G as of now in picture. Well, the moment you have 5G technology coming in, the speeds of the net would be around 100 times uh, faster than 4G. And the businesses will fast adopt more AI technology and more data will get uh, uh, stored. So any uh, organization which is investing in a hyperscale data center or in per se uh, large uh, uh, sized uh, edge data centers, I think they're on the right track because going forward, uh, even whatever the projections you are talking today, are going to be failing short because of the demand which is getting generated. So what is happening is, like I said, this data exploration uh, is pushing the uh, two factors. One is the edge side of the data center. You will see a lot of traction coming in uh, because of the uh, content uh, delivery networks to be brought uh, near to the users. And uh, this has been primarily driven by the IoT adoption. And post 5G, it will definitely push more. Then we have the hyperscale data centers already coming up. Uh, uh, this is primarily because of the digital uh, digestion of the economy and the adoption of uh, digitalization. And uh, this is uh, uh, also likely to grow. Now, what this means is, uh, again, a huge potential, not only globally, but for India as a potential. Now, today, 
if you talk about two, uh, two years on uh, back, we used to have 300 mega, megawatt as a total installed capacity as a data center, uh, be it uh, small, medium, or whatever you called it. So total installed capacity was less than 300 megawatt, and uh, which is expected to be around 500 megawatt by 2021, by this year end, and is to be doubled in the next uh, three, four years. So this is 1,000 megawatt. And this is substantiated by my previous uh, uh, controllers uh, saying themselves they are investing around uh, 300 to, five, uh, to another 200 in Chennai. So I think uh, we are on a very, very fast track moment to adopt the uh, data center adoption. And also yesterday we had a, a keynote speaking from uh, entity where they also uh, projected that the uh, 340 acres of land has already been purchased by the uh, data center uh, uh, colo companies and out of this 43% uh, occupancy is already reached by the colo players who have the rack space and uh, 560 megawatt pipeline is there so there's 1000 i think by date 2025 maybe we can pull it by 2001 more year 2024 and then um, we also see a huge uh, potential going forward so what does it mean? So the business criticality of the data center still remains the same, uh, but the complexity has now increased. Uh, so you have quick pull up and deployment, flexibility, and best issue is the three topics the CXO, CEO levels will always talk about. And then you have the maintenance and operation guys will always focus on reliability, efficiency, and management. Now this the entire thing, when you talk about in one megawatt to five megawatt, 10 megawatt, the concept remains the same. But now the overall complexity has become very, very a humongous because we are not now talking about 40 megawatts, 100 megawatts, 200, 300 megawatts. And that kind of a mega scale uh, really needs a, a different approach uh, from the traditional one. And also everybody knows that whatever megawatts of data center you are going to come up, the basic input, the oil to this data center is the power. And that massive uh, critical power demand is uh, uh, is going to be there. And there is a shortage of uh, uh, original equipment. There will be shortage of, uh, I think, the power to be supplied uh, to create uh, the kind of demand we are uh, currently having. Now, what are the options available with the most of the hyperscalers or the colo players or the data center uh, uh, built uh, players? So the conventional steps is to follow the traditional designs. While I say traditional designs is the designs we have been following up for many years, successfully done. And we think that that's the only model and we should follow because we don't have uh, much experience with the others ones. We continue to do with that. And uh, to do that, that means we have to keep increasing gray space. That means because in the same uh, kind of setup, you cannot have the same megawatts so of uh, IT load to be provided. That means, um, uh, for example, uh, we saw in, in the previous presentation, we had 20 megawatts in a, a similar uh, space and then another 24 megawatts in a lesser space and lesser number of racks. So what does that mean? That means you have to have a much more bigger gray space area dedicated to provide the power to your white space, which is the rack space. So either you do uh, maintain this or you keep increasing the gray space. That means you keep increasing your retail uh, space footprint by having acquired larger land bank and bigger land investments, uh, which is a huge cost itself, and then higher budget for CAPEX and OPEX uh, because you're following traditional methodology, which you were successful for up to 10 megawatts. Uh, that is the 2N architectures and all those. Uh, then the underutilized existing DC and build new. That means the existing DCs, which currently you are having, uh, will be only be limited to the power capacity which they are designed currently. Uh, despite the rack densities might be going higher. That means even the customer wants to go for a higher rack density and you have say 600 rack data center. And today it was designed for five, then 10, then uh, tomorrow 15 megawatts. So you, you can not grow because your gray space area cannot accommodate uh, the kind of designs or the requirement for those kind of power. So this is one of the conventional ways of doing it, but there is an interesting view. Uh, what is the proactive steps with the global uh, teams are actually discussing and many of our customers we are discussing also. Uh, this is adopt new designs. New designs is not only technology adoption, but also um, uh, uh, per se new concepts of redundancy, uh, taking a slight more uh, the different viewpoint than what is the conventional way of doing it. Uh, that means also helping you to optimize the gray space. So what are the gray space 
whether it is a uh, allocated for a particular wattage today tomorrow you can actually go and uh, uh, even double your capacity in the, within the same space how to do it that's one of the things we help our customer to do then hire it for land bank uh, the example which i gave either you keep on increasing the land bank or you utilize your it utilization of the land bank by having a better design and optimized design so optimize budget is one of the options and uh, by optimizing capex you can also optimize the opex uh, the in the next subsequent slides you will come to see and the retrofit of existing dcs to higher capacities now you cannot kill your existing dcs just because they were designed 5 years back the 5 years back is not a uh, not so uh, long ago but that time the demand was not that huge but then your current uh, existing data centers are sitting on a premium land bank so how to convert those into a larger it that's where uh, the new way of thinking is coming so i'll give you an example here now let's talk about uh, we have customers talking about uh, their it data halls uh, capacities i have uh, come across 500 1 megawatt then 1.5 1.8 1.6 1.8 2 2.4 and 3 megawatts are the standard data hall uh, is becoming um, uh, as a concept and then you go multiple of them to meet your demand of 40 or 100 or 200 uh, megawatts so traditional way what is the conventional way of doing it the conventional way of doing it was to replicate mirror that means for a 300 uh, sorry 3 megawatt uh, uh, kind of a infrastructure you needed to have a 3 megawatt on a bus a and a 3 megawatt on a bus b whether it is a configuration of 1.5 into 3 or 1 megawatt into uh, 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 3 sorry and 1.5 into 2 as a bus configuration, and then you have a 50% uh, PDUs and the load is shared 50-50 by this. So I need not explain this because this is uh, the conventional everybody is doing and everybody knows how to do it. Now let's come to the next step. The next step is going a little bit uh, additional to it. Uh, the achievement is by uh, deploying a tribus you know, of a three megawatt. Now in this three megawatt, if you see, what we are doing is dividing the uh, N into three portions. And that uh, is a, itself uh, 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 reducing the capex investment in terms of your gray space requirement, in terms because it reduces the number of uh, power backups which you require. Now, for example, out here to meet a three megawatt, the previous example you had to have a three megawatt two uh, buses, uh, and out here you need to have 1.5 megawatt into three buses to create the same architecture and the same end result, which is the two end to your customer load. And that is more critical. Uh, you are committing uh, to an architecture with the uptime uh, requirement to a customer uh, that is met by this architecture also. And then the previous architecture also, you were giving the two an architecture. There is nothing much. The only thing is that you are loading this maximum to 40 to 50 percent on each bus, and that's the capacity. You cannot exceed that. Out here, you are actually optimizing your capex investment utilization by loading maximum to 55 to 66 percent, depending upon the uh, design loads which you cater to. So you are actually bringing your load uh, uh, OPEX also better because at that load, the efficiencies go better in these equipments. And you are actually utilizing the uh, CAPEX invested uh, for those uh, equipments to deliver the kind of output which is a 2 and out. Now going for ahead, we have customers we are discussing. Uh, we have deployed this kind of uh, globally, but in India, I would like to really see uh, this concept because when you go into mega mega scale you also need to look into uh, going into a new way of redundancy which is distributed architecture redundancy where we have a three megawatt with a quad bus architecture now quad bus is not nothing but quad is basically a four so we had a tri bus which was a three now we have a, a four which is a, a quad bus so quad bus means for three megawatt now what you need is one megawatt into four numbers to deliver the same two n architecture now the point here is the end uh, rack is having the two n architecture still it's not uh, they are, these are parallel together and as an n plus one bus which was a traditional way of tier three approach out here uh, the t uh, this i don't know whether it falls in tier four three three because again our uh, uh, systems of designs or uh, certifications have to also upgrade themselves to adopt these kind of designs and up, uh, upgrade them to tiering levels so Currently, this design itself can deliver you a two-in architecture to your uh, particular rack with almost uh, uh, the number of UPCs going down. Uh, so what is the summary of this? If you see the summary of this is 
if you see comparative for three megawatt, the first traditional conventional way of doing is uh, like I explained, you have a one megawatt into uh, three numbers on one bus uh, into two sets, on the two one side, you are actually doubling it. So total now install capacity of UPS is six megawatt. Now, what is the implication of six megawatt? Six megawatt means that you have a backup also, battery backup also designed for a six megawatt. So that also is taking a lot of space. Then you have a diesel generator, which you have to, again, uh, backup design because it's a two an architecture. You need to have uh, the, uh, almost seven megawatt of the DG as well as the IT uh, uh, transformer, which is the main transformer, which is coming up. And still you are only doing the maximum loading of uh, 40 to 50% on one side. And the critical UPS and battery footprint is double, 200%. And uh, the redundancy achieved by your uh, design is still N plus N, which is two an architecture. Now, similarly on the tribus, if you see the same architecture has been done uh, with uh, uh, three into uh, 1.5 megawatt uh, UPS systems. And uh, that means you also need a lesser uh, DG capacity. You also need a lesser backup at uh, say 4.5 only because the installed total capacity is 4.5 megawatt of the UPS. So instead of six megawatt on battery design, now you have 4.5 megawatt. And the same thing, uh, you see 55 to 66% you are uh, doing the utilization space saved is almost uh, uh, you can say is around uh, 25 to 30 to 40 percent of space you can sp simply space saved by, by adopting a tri tribus architecture which means an additional rack capacity can be deployed when you design a new one or uh, with an existing facility you can actually with the tribus architecture create a more output uh, and uh, make it a much larger it uh, data center than it is currently and with the cord bus, you can simply see again, the same concept 2N is achieved with four numbers of one megawatt. That means with four megawatt of the installed capacity of UPS system, you can achieve a 2N architecture of uh, uh, design and with the four megawatt of battery. So lot of from six megawatts, almost two megawatts has been written off in terms of a capex on the battery sizing, as well as the battery cost and the space, and also almost one, to two megawatts on the uh, sizing of the ele other electrical associated uh, hardware equipments and the capex and also the apex or uh, the opex is uh, better because now you are running your in 65 to 75 percent now what does this uh, mean this means these two architectures to uh, make it to uh, uh, as a real deployed you need a very high reliable uh, systems to uh, work on that uh, because now you are not replicating everything double. So you need to have extraordinary or extra efforts to uh, choose the equipments which go in this architecture so that you know that you have an architecture which can run this and you can achieve a to an architecture to your end customer rack. Now, what does uh, here uh, Delta can uh, support and what we are doing is we have a concept of engineered solutions which we call as FlexiFord. Out here, we work from the concept level of the electrical design with the customer we on the UPS front, we uh, actually don't sell the standard boxes. We design the UPS along with the integrated uh, systems for the requirement uh, from the customer in terms of the redundancy level, whether it is 2N, whether it is uh, drivers or quad bus. And then we design this solution. And then we create a, a pre uh, custom engineered prefab UPS solution. From a standard components, which are um, proven and tested by the original uh, uh, UPS architectures. Now, what does it help? It helps you, like I said, 50% space saving, and also uh, it helps you to uh, reduce the duplication of uh, many switch gears within the UPS room. There are too many duplications happen because your electrical panel guy is also providing something and your UPS guy is also providing some standard switch gears which are not quite at all and uh, never utilized in their lifetime. So uh, this is reduced. And what we use is the standard uh, blocks of uh, components like the monoblock uh, architecture. We have the UPS systems, and then we have model architecture, UPS system, and lithium. And these are the core blocks we use to create solutions along with the DCM and other software to manage and make it a very, very systematic uh, uh, operation. Now, uh, some of the examples quickly, I'll just take two, three minutes. Uh, some of the examples of uh, our FlexiPod, which we are created along with the customers, are SCID architectures of one to three megawatt. It's an integrated uh, uh, panel along with the uh, UPS panels, input, output, along with the uh, batteries, as well as the UPS in a 
uh, in a SCID form from prefabricated from the factory and just install at the site. Similarly, SCID of 1, 1 to 3 megawatts with integrated PDU and transformers. We have so many PDU space being occupied uh, by uh, PDUs. And if you uh, uh, consolidate the transformer at one location and have the PDUs integrated, you can have a SCID which can actually cater to and reduce a lot of space. And then, of course, the when you go to the edge side or to a, a larger outside uh, uh, horizontal uh, expansions, you have power containers of one to one to, uh, to uh, two megawatts uh, in 40 feet containers from eight to 10 minutes of LIB battery inside this entire container. So this is uh, one of the unique things which we can offer. Some of the examples, we have deployed over 100 numbers of 40 feet containers in one of the uh, Colo, uh, large Colo players in uh, uh, Asia and uh, this is with the lithium ion batteries, then uh, around five to six minutes of backup inside. And then we have uh, also done the flexible architecture of, of existing setups, where we have uh, managed to fit in three into one megawatts of UPS system, where traditionally you could not have a fit have two megawatts of UPS system. So this is how you can actually see the real site pictures which we have helped our customers to uh, optimize and uh, create more. Uh, similarly, 24 megawatts in an uh, which so with colo players coming in higher density is going up uh, the load banks and the uh, demand for uh, more power from the same gray space is also one of the critical things i think uh, we and, and delta can really help uh, in uh, drafting these uh, strategies and solutions and uh, let us know if, if any of your mega hyperscale can certain need some innovative solutions and architectures we are ready to help you and with that, uh, I end my presentation and I look forward to your uh, feedback and questions and answers. So, Mr. Uh, Deepak, thank you very much. I think you had uh, mentioned several things in your presentation, but uh, some of the important uh, milestones are how to have that design alternatives and what are what is the role of architecture in that. So, can you please explain like how design alternatives you have tried because every data center will be designed by one architect, and if they if they have more and more alternate alternatives for it, they will try to find it out what many solutions are there for a particular experiment also. So, can you highlight how it varies from one project to another project also? Yeah. So, the conventional way of doing is you have a standard RFP coming from the customer, and then all the vendors are given the RFP, and then they work on it. That's a traditional way of working it. The other way is what we have seen globally, what is happening is there is a collaborative approach between the customer, the consultant, and the technology partner. The technology partners can be like us or any of our competition. So they, we sit together, we work on their concept. Like the concept say, tomorrow customer says, I have a, a 200 megawatt or I say 100 megawatt of a data center I want to create. And I have a two in architecture. I also want to give various uh, uh, options. I can. To some customer, I want to give, I have come, to come across this situation. There are some customers I want to give N plus one only. Some customer may I may, might have to give higher redundancy and some premium customer I have to dedicatedly give something like that. So there is the job of a technology partner to work along with the cons consultant, their designated consultant, because consultants have a very uh, uh, big role out here because they understand the whole holistic approach uh, towards the uh, overall MEP as a project not only as a uh, technology of a uh, power side on the UPS and critical power. Our side is the critical power we can give, but the back end, how the DG sizing, how the redundancy level uh, and the, how the cabling or whether to go for a bus truck or to go for cabling uh, up to the racks, whether the transformer can be integrated commonly at the, uh, uh, at the source of the uh, UPS system or the our distributed uh, transformers and all those things. So this all thing can only come pre-RFP. That means at the concept stage, the customer decides to sit across the table and have a joint discussion and say, okay, now let's uh, look at the innovative way of uh, doing this. This is what I am having a challenge or uh, this is my current site, retrofit site. I want to enhance this retrofit uh, to a higher capacity, how to do it. So there uh, comes our role where we help our customers. All these designs you are seeing are actually uh, uh, 3D designs of our customers only, where we have worked uh, and uh, jointly worked out the solutions. Yes, you're right. Actually, holistic approach and collaborative efforts would, would give uh, better results. And uh, this, this kind of efforts will also eliminate all the all the difficulties which will arise later on once the data, data center is completely commissioned. One thing is very important you mentioned during your presentation 
uh, instead of having like more and more data center, it is always better to uh, utilize the space, whatever they have built. So utilization of IT space, utilize, utilize of like a complete land uh, with regard to the total IT load also, that is extremely important. We have visited some time back Intel uh, data center in Bangalore. They haven't expanded too much, but the load uh, in each rack, they have increased like several fold. So just, just for a minute, kindly elaborate how it will affect the overall architecture of the project. For example, like I have seen customers, we had designed, we used to design five megawatts as a large customer around 10 years back. That used to mean five megawatts somebody is creating is a huge customer for any data center. Today, five megawatt is a, is a edge data center. I am discussing edge greater than five today. So what is happening is your densities in the particular rack is going up. Also, you would have seen in the last two, three uh, days, you have many players talking about uh, liquid immersion cooling. And the you, you have to not forget that it's not the conventional rack. You have to also see when you are talking about 200 kilowatt in a rack or a 200 or a 50 kilowatt to a 200 kilowatt in a, a, uh, in, a in a space which you cannot imagine. Uh, and you have a huge premium space in suppose, suppose in Mumbai, and you want to convert it and give it to a customer who has this kind of a uh, requirement and that doesn't have the land and wants to do, deploy it. You can dedicate one of the halls, but how will you do that without the power sizing uh, with the conventional way of designing? So out there we help, and these solutions will help in terms of uh, retrofitting the architectures uh, by redeploying uh, the uh, uh, less utilized. Uh, equipments to a more optimized fashion. So when I say this premium land and everything, everybody uh, today's data center of the 300 to 500 megawatt, whatever we are having, are in four cities, not to be very frank. And those four cities, everybody know, are the premium land space out of which Mumbai is number one. So I see a lot of uh, rack per land, IT uh, rack, uh, kilowatt per rack, per land square foot area is underutilized, being utilized by today's um, uh, players. And I, I, I foresee a lot to be changed if they really want to generate more revenue from the same uh, existing data centers. Yeah, so thank you very much. So there are a lot, lot many discuss, discussing points in that. And uh, I would only mention one important point. Therefore, yesterday we launched the ECBC user guide uh, that would be uh, kind of mandatory provision from Bureau of Energy Efficiency in some time. Already some of the states like uh, Uttarakhand, but we would not have much data center there. So once the ECBC is mandatory all across the country, there would be more and more de demand to have the code compliance equipment or all the, all the equipment which are meeting the compliance or exceeding the compliance. So we will share that document with you and uh, we will further discuss offline many more things. Yeah, sure. So... I stop sharing now. Yeah. So now uh, we have another speaker, uh, Mr. Brizju. Brizju is from uh, from AHRI, Air Conditioning, Heating and Refrigeration Institute. AHRI is responsible for setting uh, setting benchmarking for the industry, especially for the air conditioning. And Ju brings a lot of expertise in, he has more than 20 years of experience in uh, HVAC. He was more focusing on energy efficiency and having certification for room air conditioner, dehumidifier, central air conditioning, or many other uh, equipment of the HSC part. He has 12 years of experience in lab director, having a lot of a lot of R&D work, and he's very much familiar with HSC product design, testing, certification compliance. And we thought to, thought to have him to introduce the concept of rights, right system sizing and selection, because that, that matters uh, most uh, for all new data centers while having the right selection and sizing of sizing of equipment, and HVC will consume a lot of energy in that. So, Mr. Bridge, uh, we uh, we welcome you, and uh, over to you to uh, to start our presentation. Thank you, uh, Shara. Yes, can you see my screen now? Uh, yes, we are able to see it. All right. Good, uh, good evening, everyone. So, I'm Bridge from AHI. So, I'm in charge of Asia operations. So, for today's meetings, I'm going to. Uh, give everyone's you know idea how to make selections uh, based on different uh, application. So the objectives I'm going to deliver to the meetings here is you know the first one I'm going to uh, let you know so which standard will be used. So mainly I'm talking about the equipment, not system. So the AHI 
36 say will be used. So this is a talk about you know method of testing. So how to read your equipment, and also also I'm going to uh, give everyone's information about the en energy efficiency requirement from uh, following industry. So which was copied from Ashray's uh, stand. So next second one is I'm going to give everyone's information about um, equipment selections. You know. Uh, different rooms might have in different requirements. Talk about different configurations of the of the units. So, for this um, uh, items, so I'm going to introduce uh, you know a temp a different temperature and a different external uh, static pressure will be applied. So the last topic, so I'm going to deliver to the teams here. You know, so we talk about you know, how to make sure you know that equipment can be in you know, operated safely. So I uh, mainly talk about the high or low temperature. Options. So I'm talking about you know abnormal conditions here. So first one, so I want to let you know the method of test, which is AHI uh, 36 days. So this is the latest one uh, for the industry. So back two years ago, everybody talked about A3 uh, 127. So we have MOU talk about in between AHI and A3. So the latest standard for uh, data center is 36 days. So this standard will be applied for the data center to talk mainly is all that air conditioning. So the other standard you might know, which is AHI uh, standard 390. So less than will be applied for unit, which will be used for outside of take on uh, station. So you can see here, so the other standard HRA, um 127, so will be applied for the air code uh, unit. So I'm highlighting uh, the near sensible cooling capacity and the efficiency here in my presentation because you know today most of the countries they talk about total capacity, but when we look at the requirement from the center, right? So they may not talk about dry cooling capacity. So we, we need to change our you know, mindset to certify new ratings, which is you know net uh, sensible cooling capacity and uh, and the uh, efficiency. So uh, and the other one is op uh, Op uh, high temperature operation, uh, operations. And also we're going to launch a new stand for the industry, which is you know, uh, integrating data sensible uh, reading capacity based on test the A, B, C, D condition, which is the similar as chiller conditions. So you can see here, they have you know, different energy efficiency requirement for air code, what chiller and the work code, uh, what work, work code the, uh, equipment. So, and also they have different configuration, talk about you know, down flow, up flow, uh, ducted without ducted and uh, horizontal uh, unit. So when you try to you know, make the selections for your data center, you need to make sure you know, uh, which things you talk about. So you can, you can decide, you know, so the minimum uh, sensible uh, efficiency will be applied. So either you know, air code and, and Air code unit or maybe work code unit. So they have different two types, mainly two, two different types of unit. So for this slide, this is it. Just to let you know so how many equipment type will be applied. So the first one you can see right side is single package unit, and then the other is separate you know, unit, including indoor and outdoor unit. So this slide, so this is the other three. So the first one is you know, unit with remote condenser unit. And then the other one is you know, a unit with remote air flow code or cooling tower. Maybe the, the, the cooling will be from a cooling tower. So the last one is the chiller water unit. We call this is large room thing called unit. Will be applied for the data center. So for this slide, so it's easy to understand is, you know, um, they might have different indoor uh, type unit will apply for the data center. The first one is ceiling mounting uh, unit with ducted or without ducted. You can uh, see the you know, picture from uh, configuration uh, one and two. So the number three, um, four, and, and the five is you, this is the traditional equipment that will be used for the data center. The first one is a uh, down flow unit. The second one is a horizontal flow unit. And then the other one is up flow uh, unit with and without ducting. And then the last two, that's the new, um, new equipment that will be used for data center. The first one is rooftop uh, mounting unit, and then the other one is a uh, wall mounted uh, unit. So I'm going to introduce different applications uh, with different uh, temperature for this unit. So the first one is uh, ceiling mounted stand model 
airflow configurations. You can see here. So the Stema model Tokawa is ducted discharge and uh, ducted return. Um, ducted return. So this is a we call it, this is a condition one we applied. So the like dry bubble will, will be 23.9 and a dew point will be 11.1. So the other um, configuration will be applied maybe. So we call this application um, configuration. So the ducted discharge and the free air return. And uh, the second one is a city mountain stem model. So, uh, this is the free air discharge and the free air return. And the same as the first one, so the condition one will be applied. So you can see the drive bulb and the uh, dew point maker is the same. And then the other one is ap uh, application configuration. So the free air discharge and ducted air return. So this kind of configuration as well. So this is the configuration three. So for mounted stain model air flow configuration, the standard model will be a rise flow plan a discharge and a free air return. So the condition will be different because they will be applied for different rooms, right? So the, deep, the dry bubble will be 29.4 and the dew point is the same. And then you can see the other uh, six different application configuration based on the uh, room design. So for example, you know, the ducted discharge and the duct, uh, and ducted return, or maybe free air discharge and the uh, ducted return, something like that. And then the configuration for its horizontal flow unit you know, is not, it's, it's not common today. And you can see here, so the still more be a free air discharge and a free air return. And then the temperature is, is high, it's much higher. The dry bubble will be up to three, uh, 35 degrees C, a dew point is the same. So also they have the, uh, four different application configurations. The first one is ducted discharge and ducted return. And the second one is ducted discharge and the free air return. And the, third, and the third one is free air discharge and the rise flow plan return. And then the last one is free air discharge and the ducted return. So one more here is, for the mountain stand model airflow configurations. So they have two different standard models. The, the first one is ducted discharge and the free, free, uh, free air return. So the uh, condition two will be applied. So the dry bubble will be uh, 29.4 and the dew point is 11.1. .1. And then the standard model two will be free discharge, air discharge and the free air return. So the condition uh, one will be applied. So when we talk about energy efficiency for the rooms, right? You need to make sure, so which configuration, so you select for a room. So then the different uh, air, uh, the room condition will be applied. So that means you are, you are going to get different the COPs, right? Based on different configuration and the room air condition. So again, so the other four application configuration will, app will be applied as well for this configuration. So, we did talk about you know, the different uh, room air condition for different configuration now. So I'm going to deliver different um, external state pressure because it is going to uh, impact the design. So you can see here, so the flow mounting, mounted units, right? So including ducted and without ducted for sure. For the non-ducted unit, right? So the external state pressure will be zero Pascal. But for ceiling uh, mounted uh, ducted unit, so, they have uh, three different ranges. The first one is if the unit less, the capacity is less than 8.5 kilowatts. So the 25 possible will be applied. For the median size from 8.5 to 9 kilowatts, so the 50 Pascal will be applied. For the largest unit, which is uh, greater than 90 kilowatts, so the 75 Pascal will be applied. So for the, mount, for the mounted unit, so they have a, a flow unit duct, non ducted. So for sure, zero Pascal will be applied. For the upflow unit with ducted, same uh, for uh, including three ranges, right? So you can see here. So the unit will be big, then semi mounted. So the first range is lower. Uh, we call it, this is small unit uh, from twenty three point four. So the seventy five Pascal will be applied. 
for the medium size unit from 23.4 to 86.5, so 100 Pascal will be applied. For the largest unit, um, which is greater than 86.5, so 125 Pascal will be applied. For the down flow unit and the uh, horizontal flow unit, so down flow unit, 50 Pascal will be applied. Uh, horizontal flow, because there is no ducted rise right? so mainly. I mean, this is total bus stand model, okay? So the zero Pascal will be applied. Let's talk about room air conditioning. So from the configuration, um, in, uh, for different uh, the different configurations, right? So the ceiling mounted unit, right? So the condition one, which is twenty three point nine, which is dry bubble, and two point one and eleven point one were applied for the flow mounted. So they have two uh, different conditions. So can you? Into uh, 29.4, which is what drive up, and the 11.1, which is uh, two point, uh, will be applied for the clean street. So 70 point, 75 uh, drive up, and the 11.1, uh, point will be applied. And uh, for the roof mounted unit, so which is a uh, new uh, conf uh, configuration, and um, we added this in the standing uh, just uh, uh, last year. So the condition two will apply. Here, so the condition is talk about outside of condition. So for the air code, so um, 35 point, point degree C were applied for the, for the dry bulb. For the worker uh, unit, so you can see the uh, different uh, uh, temperature here. So the entrant work temperature will be 28.3 and the temperature rise will be 6.7. And for the glycol, so this is new, but I, I didn't add the energy efficiency here. If you want, really want, I can share with you by my email. So the entry glycol temperature will be 40, and the temperature rise is uh, uh, 6.8. And the chilled water is easy to understand. So the entry temperature is 10, and temperature rise will be uh, 6.7. Uh, so the same as chiller, right? So we use the IPRB based on different season, right? So uh, here is, uh, we talk about ABCD condition, will be applied for the, you know, integrating their sensible ratings. But, but it's new for the, for the industry and now. So we, we didn't see the, you know, this ratings industry. So we're going to promote this uh, for the industry uh, use in the near future. So la last slide. So this is additional requirement for the, for the equipment, which will be used for the testing. We need to make sure you know, the unit can be operated you know, safely and uh, continuously. So the first one is a loss of power restart uh, timing through. Um, this is apply will be applied for the coolings, operate for the minimum of one hour, then all power if, shall be in, uh, interrupted for for short time. So then unit, we need to make sure the unit can be in you know, a restart within 10 minutes. And then the other one is uh, low temperature uh, starting. So the unit will be uh, put in a you know, cold uh, room air condition. For example, this is the uh, 4.4 degree C. So that you, we need to make sure the unit can be uh, operated within 30 minutes. And the last one is, uh, this is the, for the, mainly is applied for the in India and the uh, Middle East, okay? So we need to make sure that for the air core unit, so the unit can be operated continuously at a higher temperature, which is up to 52 degrees C, which is talk about our outdoor opinion. So that's all, thank you. So thank you, uh, Mr. Bridge. I think uh, it will help data center owners to to have a to have a relook when they decide about their uh, system sizing selection because that is the stage where uh, there could be more and more value addition to the project. So we thank you uh, for this presentation and uh, we are slightly led because we had very detailed discussion uh, during uh, presentation from Mr. Suresh, as well as Mr. Thakur. So I think uh, we have to close the session very soon. So thank you everyone for this uh, nice presentation. And yes, it is equally important to have more and more focus for hyperscale data center course. The kind of intensity for energy use, the, the total land capacity for them would be very high for these kind of data centers. So very soon uh, we are planning to have some uh, exclusive sessions in the in the month of September as well as in November, 
so we will invite you again to discuss more about sustainability in hyperscale data centers so thank you for your presentation your time and your continuous support to idbc thank you all the audience they can join the last session uh, which we are studying at 5:45 thank you everyone thank, thank you suraj ji thank you deepak ji thank you mr jo thank you bye The information that empowers and connects us comes back to our global data centers. Built for a secure, sustainable and digital world, they make the invisible visible. And anything possible. And that's a great thing. Together we do great things. data center infrastructure in the city of chennai the adani chennai 1 data center is the biggest hyperscale data center in chennai with a 32 megawatt it load it is strategically located in sipcot it park with direct connectivity to the national highway and other major it hubs in chennai The data center is being built to meet global standards with seven layers of security, best-in-class power usage effectiveness, redundant fiber connectivity, and green energy. The Adani Chennai One shall be equipped to provide one-stop solution for all telecom and IT infrastructure needs of hyperscale customers, including low-latency network connectivity, high-performance computing, and other value-added services. Through this data center. The Adani Group aspires to contribute to the local economy while continuing a work towards nation building at large and being steadfast on our philosophy of growth with goodness. Founded in Germany over 100 years ago by Anton Piller. The company has a long history in the manufacturing of exceptionally high-quality electrical machines and power quality equipment. Today, as part of the multidisciplined global British engineering group Langley Holdings PLC, Piller is a world leader and innovator in a number of power protection technologies, specializing in UPS systems for mission critical applications and frequency converters for aircraft ground power, amongst other uses. Piller UPS systems are found in applications where continuous high quality power is paramount, such as computer data centers, financial institutions, broadcasting, telecommunication networks, airports, 
healthcare facilities, and continuous process production sites. Nothing protects quite like Pillar. It's amazing what humans have accomplished. Cars that think, machines that learn, healthcare that predicts. The progress of tomorrow has yet to be imagined, but it will rely on data. It will rely on Vertiv. Vertiv ensures data gets where it needs to be uninterrupted. Critical power is always running. Servers perform at optimal temperatures. Infrastructures grow safely and responsibly. Applications run without glitches and life leaps forward again. Getting there takes vision and agility. Our leading experts think beyond infrastructure, connecting the dots to create integrated, intelligent ecosystems, to create a future that takes innovation to the next level. And when business needs shift, we work closely with our customers every step of the way. Together, we ensure they are ready before they ever need to be. Vertiv provides continuity in our digital world, so we remain unbound, liberated, free, to create the next big thing. Vertiv, architects of continuity. Great things change things. Wherever we are, whatever we're doing, 